It, it was totally awesome. Um, <laughs> at, seriously, you know, once you get past the history and just where you are and what you're doing, the the group of guys there and how they put the passion into your project when a couple guys from the middle of nowhere, uh, you know, we almost were like, you know, almost feel like we don't deserve it in a sense. And they were all about us while we were there. So that was, that was really cool to have somebody just delve into your songs with you and help you on that journey to get the best product. Like I, I felt like they were working just as hard as we were trying to get trying to get this thing the best it could be. So it was, was awesome. When he was talking about them uh, diving in, you figure they were the Lou, the guy that's the engineer. John Lou Stowe. Uh, John Lou Stowe. We call him Lou. That uh, um, co-produced the record and did a lot of the engineering, did all the recording, and all, him and Oliver. They work with the uh, biggest rock stars in the world, and they would get all amped up and excited when we did something right or when they were trying to get something out of us and we did it. Like he would get so excited for Tad when he was trying to get something out of a part on the drums and then we'd be like, yes. And it's like, it was legitimately, they were invested in what we were doing. To me, that just, that blew my mind. And then when you walk in a place like that, all of their records, the platinum records, they're all over the walls and like everywhere you turn, there's rock history. Plus, I said I'm a big Dave Grohl Foo Fighters fan, so that was like almost sensory overload for me. Kind of have to let that sink in when you get there before, and then you can get to work after that. That was the hardest part, I think, is we all walked in. We all love the Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl and history. There's, and you kind of walk in, and you're like a you're like a first trip at Disneyland for a musician, and for like. For us, there's just walls of guitars and they're labeled and they have the names of the musicians they're using. And I walk up and I see all the drums and then you see all the gold records, you see the Nirvana Hall and the, and you just like start, like kind of starstruck. But then what like these guys are saying, these guys are like really down to earth and they, they're like so helpful and they want to make, they want to make it like, they want to make you feel good about what you're doing there and make you feel like a rock star. And so, after 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 a while, you, after we settled down a little bit, um, it was just a lot of fun because of their personalities and, and just felt good. I mean, this is for me. It was my first time ever having somebody tell me what to do, and 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 so it was, it was nerve wracking. And and so those guys, they made us real comfortable, made us feel good, and, and it was an amazing situation. So. Typically, when you go to a studio, you carry all your own gear in, and there's a studio there for you to record. We brought our gear, but then you turn around and there's well over 100 guitars. It's like, you want a different guitar, let's just go back here and look through them and grab one. You want a different snare, hold on, let me get this, he'll go around and grab a different tom. Like, it, everything just at your fingertips, it was crazy. So our, so our runner, our guy who got us coffee or Wiley, food, if you ever watch this, name we love Wiley. you, buddy. He's a cool dude. He's like one of the main dudes of Chevy Metal. Like. He's a monster, like, and he's like, hey, you guys need any coffee or anything? He went and got us lunch every day. It's like, it was just, it was weird. People are way cooler than us, like, taking care of us. Is, yeah. I guess the best yeah. way to say it. Way right. cooler than right. we are taking really good care of us. Yeah, top-notch guys. I took my own equipment, and then I found out I could play on Taylor Hawkins' equipment, so I'm not playing on my own equipment when I can play <laughs> on Taylor Hawkins' equipment. <laughs> So the first time we were there, we went for two different spurts. We went for five days as a band. Um, Dave actually wasn't there; they were touring at the time. But you're still, it's you're still in their home. I mean, this is. I honestly think that's where they hang out. I mean, when they're not at home, hanging out with their families, they all. I mean, there's an arcade downstairs. There's a kitchen upstairs. Like I think that's big dining table. I really get the vibe that those guys get together, play music, enjoy hanging out with each other, and that's where they do it. You're literally walking into their their home. They they invited you in and they called it the back cave. Like for their group. Yeah, kind of, like the yeah back cave. pretty much. And you know, they've made they've made I don't know, three three or four records there. So uh, and beyond there there's even other records made there. So there was there's a huge weight walking into there that you kind of 
you're conscious of it because you want to rise to the occasion, but you're also not trying to psych yourself out to the point that you just kind of nosedive. So that was, I think it was really satisfying as, as a group to go in there and, and do what we did because I was, I, was, I was really proud of what we did. I, uh, we get, we get asked all the time, where the hell is Safford? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and so finally, after a while, you get it, like, nailed down. You're like, oh, we're, just, like, 60 miles from Mexico and 40 miles from New Mexico, like, down in the bottom southeastern corner of Arizona. Um, to me, I think it's just a super cool thing. I've got Texas roots. I was born in Waco. I think you were, you guys were both born here, right? Mm-hmm. And, um grew up here and I hope we just make people proud from being from here and not being knuckleheads and being <coughs> being in the papers for the right reasons versus the wrong <laughs> reasons. I think it's what makes our sound so unique. There's there's nobody else on the planet doing what we're doing where we're doing it. And so I think it's why we sound different than everybody else because I don't think we fought it for the first few years, but we've really embraced it in the last couple of years, kind of where we're doing it, how we're doing it. Where we're from. Where we're from, all that stuff. The record cover is actually Val Graham. If you if you like if you actually have the physical copy of it, it's there's uh if you open it up it's there's Val Graham on the front of it with waves below it and then on the back is a big tree where him and I uh, was outside of the house that we wrote some of the record at and then the waves uh, representing California, but it's actually a shot of Mount Graham that's been laid in and, and what do you call it? Not digitized. I'm going to let you struggle a little bit. I'm curious. <laughs> Photoshopped in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you hold the record up and you pull it down, it's it's Mount Graham. I think it's, you know, in life, you when you're from a small town, it's, it's cool until you're ready to get out, and then you're ready to get out, and you don't want anything to do with it. Um, so when I came back, I still had some of that mentality, but, you know, once... Honestly, once my son was born, I realized that, you know, my son is from here too, so that's actually a pretty cool thing. And I think ever since then, I think that's kind of, it's really changed for me. I, not that I didn't care for this place. I think it's the whole small town thing. You know, you ask anybody that's from a small town. and Can't wait to get out. It's kind of a love-hate relationship. And ever since he was born, it's been nothing but a love relationship because it's, you know, it's where he's from too. Well, and then you see all the stuff going on in big cities and we, we play, you know, we don't play very much around here. And so... We're in bigger places all the time, and it's fantastic to come home. Like <laughs> Those are nice places to be for the weekend. Right. It's great to go up and experience Sitting the... in traffic and trying to get gear unloaded yeah. and in and out and all that stuff, and then you come here and, like, I can pull out of my driveway and, like, back the band trailer, like, four times if I need to, and there's, like, maybe two cars that have to go around <laughs> me. Where... <laughs> Uh, in big places, it's just not that way. You know, we rented we rented a house both times. We we're in LA. We rented a house to uh, that we stayed in while we recorded, and like it's traffic all the time. And there's houses, and then like right next to this house is like a foot, and then there's another house, and you can only have two cars in the driveway, and you can't park on the street. There's just so many cool things about about the this small town USA that we live in. Our buddy Coop, he, uh, I don't, rem- I don't remember, Coop? what's his name? Drew Koopa. <laughs> uh, he's a really good friend of ours. He's a musician, a little further along than we are. He's uh, based out of Tucson, but he's done a ton for us. Uh, we've tried to do a lot for him. We've kind of just pulled each other in and love he's playing shows the, together. He's part of the Pony Rock sound. He is part of the Pony Rock sound. Um, he's friends with uh, Brian, the Foo's front of house guy, and there's a whole story about how all that happened. and. Um, Coop got invited to make a record out there and took TJ and had TJ cut all the guitar on his record out there. And then Teach was able to build some of his own relationships and then kind of went from there. Here's how I feel, and I think they're on the same page. We talk about Safford and kind of being small, from a small town and being rooted in a small town. I think one thing that we all have in common, we're very family oriented. I mean, what's been really fun for me is, is their parents um, they're very musical um, and they go to a lot of our shows and, and lately they've been been able to get up and play with us that's been that's been a lot of fun and we we never really forgot what it's like to be from Safford so so when we go places we're, we're overly friendly to people we enjoy the interaction with them because we don't you know we're we go to Safeway and we buy you know we're just Safford folk we don't know what adulation's all about we're just having fun 
um, and, and people that aren't from Safford and meet us in different places think that maybe we're something we're not. We're just we're just a band that likes to play music and have a little bit of fun. And so Safford, we just stay real grounded that way. Our families are number one. Um, we go out and play some music. We like to visit the big city and act big city for about a week, and then we come back home to our jobs and our families. And so Safford's like, I don't know, just keeps us grounded, keeps us, I don't know, humble, I guess. Keeps us so, normal. 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 Hard, it's normal. Hard to call yeah. us normal, but. Well, yeah. when you go to, like when here, you go to Walmart or Safeway, you get groceries, whatever, you, you, there's no chance that you're walking into any of those places and not seeing mm-hmm. anyone that you know. Oh, yeah. And not having at least a conversation or two. And for us, that's what shows are like. Like, if I see you at a show and I don't get a chance to talk to you, then the next time that I recognize you, I'm not going to pretend I don't know who you are. Like, we're going to say thanks for coming. Because we don't get to do any of this without all those people that buy tickets and come hang out and wear our shirts and tell everybody about the record or whatever it is that they say about us. But we don't get any of that. We don't get to do any of this stuff without, without that. And so for us, like you said, that connection and the family side of it. Like I love finding out where people are from and what they do for a living and all that. So you don't really see us kind of getting off stage and run into a green room or leave in or going to the hotel. We go out and hang out. TJ and I have gone, gotten into Texas acoustic. We did a full band gig in Waco at the Hippodrome. Uh, the rest of it's mostly here around Arizona. Flagstaff, Tucson, Phoenix. Rocky Point. Rocky Point. Roger Klein puts on a big festival down there. It's like four days. Um, and it's, I don't even know how many different venues, but basically they take the bars and they become music venues for that Thursday through Sunday. And then they have a main stage that's like a big typical music festival. I think they have about, I think they sell 6,000 tickets roughly, but everybody travels down there from all over Arizona, like all over the country. There's people from all over the world that come in. And um, that whole community is a group of people, fans, musicians have all kind of just brought us in. And um, so we travel down there once a year. And like coming up, that's we've got that one coming up in June, June 6th through the 10th. Way cooler. Way yeah. cooler. Way cooler. Blown away by Mexico last year. Especially the first night we, we were at a place called JJ's. It was the Thursday night. And um, they have this really cool outdoor um, stage. and. We didn't know what to expect, you know, we'd never played there and the beach that people were lined up on the beach and they had a big seating area and we just had like a really great set. We in the mid, we had planned on playing this set and TJ made a great call and he said we're going to, we, we play, actually covered a Foo Fighters tune called Everlong and he turned around and said we're doing Everlong. And once we did that it seemed like the energy of that place just went from like 5 to 10 and all of a sudden the stage, I took a selfie, I'm, I started doing this from this gig as I I took a selfie and these guys are kind of kneeling down, I'm behind the drum kit and we have this, it looks like forever fans and they're just going, they're rabid and going crazy. And uh, man, we just, from that, that first night, that energy we got, man, the whole rest of the trip was so much fun and we put that energy the rest of our Because they'd never shows. heard of us. Like right. Who's I, a... I think that's what really surprised me is that was probably the, some of the most passionate fans that weren't ours that all of a sudden became our passionate fans mm-hmm. was from Mexico. Like it was, it was insane. You just all of a sudden these people are like, "Okay, we're in. Yeah. Well, like you're a band now." Yeah, and the Pistoleros played right before us. And when I was in high school, I used to go to Mill Avenue and I used to watch the Jim Blossoms and the Gas Giants and the Pistoleros. And so. I was just, it was so cool to, the Pistoleros got off stage and then we got on stage and I'm, I'm, I'm 99.9% sure that that crowd was there to watch the Pistoleros and so I was like, oh my gosh, what, you know, hope they dig us, you know, and then all of a sudden we start playing and it just seemed like the energy of that place was amazing. I mean, we had, we were playing with grins on our faces and sweating and just having the time of our lives. You do sweat a lot in Mexico <laughs> in June next to the ocean. Yeah. yeah. But really, ever since that, actually, now that you pointed out, ever since that gig, our dynamic has changed. I think that trip, uh, I've never spent as much time with band members together in a row. Like, it was four days of us together, nowhere to go. And this is the first, you know, group of guys we've had that I'm like, 
I really don't mind hanging around you guys for four days. And actually, when we're gone from each other for a while, I kind of miss you guys. Like, So I think that was really big for our chemistry, spending four days together, playing those many shows, eating meals, experiencing all these things together. Mm. Ever since then, it's we've had a totally different show that I feel like we're one unit that we play a role, but we all are kind of, I don't know, kind of having the same heartbeat and kind of we're kind of synced in, moving the same way. Yeah. So I, you take a group of people that don't know you from Adam, and then all of a sudden, like, want to know, want to know you, and go buy your shirts and your albums and all that stuff. It's it's really, really, really cool. So I'm in Benson, and, and we're doing a basketball tournament, and I've got my like my Benson polo on and some. Cotton Dockers, you know, in my <laughs> assistant principal. 94. Gear. Yeah. <laughs> Steve cotton, cotton Dockers in a cotton polo. <laughs> and I'm sitting up there, it's and when you're the there. athletic director and, and you're not, and the assistant principal, you're not a very popular person. When I was a teacher, I, at least I felt like I was very popular. You said I was hot. I didn't. Um, <laughs> but I was sitting up against the wall. <laughs> I was sitting up against the wall, and this... These, these girls walk up and uh, they weren't students um, at Benson and they, we had Empire High School and some Tucson teams there and this young lady says, hey, um, is your name Tad? And I said, yeah, well, I'm Mr. Jacobson. You know, I don't, I don't want kids calling me Tad. And so she goes, no, 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 I, I, you play at the Coltrane's, don't you? And I was like, yeah, I play at the Coltrane's. You heard of us? She goes, I was at, your, I was at the Drew Cooper release show with my mom and I, I I follow you guys, and um, my mom's got your autograph, and I, I got a shirt, and blah, 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 <laughs> and I'm awesome. like, what? And so then she comes back later with a couple of our students, and I don't I, I don't really go around the Benson community and, you know, hey, uh, guess what? I'm in this band, and I want to be cool. I, all of a sudden, kids are, like, asking me a million questions, and then, um, so, yeah, I mean, I've had a couple of instances I walked into, a, a, there's, there's a giant on the corner, and a lady who's related to a person at the school says, hey, you're that drummer from the Coltrane's. I said, yeah, I am. She goes, can I get a CD? Like, and I was like, I'll, I'll try to get you one. It's a little older lady. She goes, <laughs> would you sign it? And I said, yeah. So it's, that's weird for me, you know I mean? But it's cool. I'm not going to lie. It's kind, of, it's kind of fun to go somewhere and someone say, complete stranger, don't you play with the Coltrane's? That's pretty fun. So. With the crazy craziness from the record release a couple weeks ago, and all the articles and everything that's been flying around town. Now I get like quite a bit here around town, just like, hey, you guys are the ones from the thing, so on and so forth, so it's pretty cool. We're the Coltrane's, um, it's they just the that. Coltrane's at Instagram. Um, Twitter, Facebook. Actually, it's all the same across all the socials, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. C-O-L-E, we haven't said that yet. C-O-L-E, Coltrane's. C -O -L -E. Uh, the website's www.thecoltrains.com. Luckily, the way we spell it, there's no, there's not a bunch of other websites out there. Mm -hmm. The new records everywhere. On every anywhere, anywhere you, you can get, get digital distribution, it's there. Amazon, Google, iTunes, Spotify. Um, you can grab it from Bandcamp on our website. Um, the way that benefits us most is Bandcamp on the website, or actually going to iTunes and actually buying the record there. Uh, everything else doesn't really pay us the same as far as money in our pocket for the product. No little cigarette and smile away the smoke out of a face Black hair brown from the summer sun Green eyes looked around the place And she told me that she loved